Generally, when talking about Dota 2, specifically in regards to offlane and heroes you should pick on it as position 3, the most common answer and recommendation from people would be something that team fights and has a stun. This isn't at all a bad idea and certainly opens up a lot of room for the rest of your lineup, but it also isn't mandatory. This video was partially inspired by the recent resurgence of Broodmother in competitive play at this year's current TI. As she isn't actually being played as a position 2 at the moment, but rather an aggressive, choking offlaner that then starts building around the team. Broodmother isn't the only one that can have this menacing playstyle of taking the enemy's area of play though. So today, I present you with a hero that can be played very similar to Broodmother in laning stage and early mid game and transition it into a winning game. Weaver. One of the reasons why I find Weaver to be completely underrated in pups in 732 is just how absolutely vile his laning stage is at the moment. Weaver has one of the best toolkits, not just for surviving lane, but also lay the pressure to such a degree it's hard not to get kills if you play your hand right. Suguchi lets you do any number of things within the lane. It allows you to get just enough burst damage to make sure an enemy carry or support won't deny you. It can gap close your position 4 to help him if he's in danger, or help assist him in a kill, or be used purely defensively to get out of trouble. It does however have a downside akin to Pango's swashbuckle. If used incorrectly or at a wrong time, an observant and patient opponent can use the brief time it's on cooldown to net a kill on you. So complete understanding of Suguchi as a skill is mandatory. It isn't even Suguchi that ends up being the most annoying thing about him, it's Geminid Attack. Ever since they gave Geminid Attack the ability to not always be on autocast and being a passive, it has made Weaver's laning state tremendously better. You can effectively last hit and threaten enemies with Geminid if they try to deny or last hit themselves. What's even more, because Geminid can be toggled off as auto attack, that can turn it into an orb attack. What this means is that if you manually click the cast button of Geminid on an enemy, creeps will not draw aggro when you utilize the skill. Effectively, you get to do a double damage attack every once in a while on position 1 or 5 of your choosing, which keeps you safely at a distance as you do it, and without drawing aggro from creeps. This is insanely obnoxious to play against, since it's extremely hard not to take a massive amount of damage from Weaver during the laning stage, with not too many ways of preventing it. Pair all his skills together and you now have a hero that has really good lane control, high kill potential, incredibly difficult to kill and can progress from laning into a super scary mid game. The wonderful thing about Weaver is that, because Geminid functions the way it does, there really is a lot of avenues we can go down in terms of items if you want to specialize into damage. That said, this guide is going to focus on the playstyle I've had quite a significant success with, and that is playing him very similar to how a Broodmother offlane can dominate a game on her own. For this reason, winning your lane is super important. If you're not throwing the enemy carry out of lane with your innate toolkit on Weaver, your game is going to look so much more difficult. Because of this, it's important we build just enough items early game to win the lane. I always build a Blightstone on Weaver. The minus armor from it is extremely good for adding damage onto your opponent, plays well around Geminid, and empowers your position 4. It also plays very potently around the Swarm, by gradually making armor go lower and lower. Most heroes will end up taking pure damage by going in the minus as you attack them with this combo. If a little bit of extra oomph is needed, I can always recommend a single race band. A single mana giving item is also much recommended. Something as little as a ring of Basilius or having a raindrop on Weaver will significantly help your mana upkeep during laning and into the mid game allowing you to play a lot faster, which is what you want. You're then going to focus on your main damage and farming tool for the rest of the game. Maelstrom. By getting Javelin as early as you can, we can make the annoying poking from Geminid that much more vicious, since each hit now has a chance to proc Javelin, which is even more damage, usually enough to send most carries out of lane and into jungle. Upgrading into Maelstrom is mandatory here, since it not only provides us with a ridiculous amount of damage, but it is what's going to allow us to farm the enemy creep wave and jungle very aggressively. After this, there's generally three items I consider mandatory on Weaver, and can be somewhat acquired in any order. Those are Treads, Aghanim Shard, and Lincoln Sphere. Lincoln Sphere can be replaced by BKB, which you'll want later anyway if the game goes on. But in most games, you really benefit tremendously from its stats, and it makes you crazy annoying for supports to deal with. Treads just so happens to be the boots of choice for Weaver. After you've acquired Lincoln Sphere, you don't exactly need to boot swap a whole lot any longer, but before that, you can also save a little bit of mana if you want to be efficient. Lastly, let's talk about Shard. Shard was changed significantly as of recently. At first, I thought it was a massive nerf. Everyone did. And it is for late game, sure. For early game though, I can't adequately explain how wild this thing is now. Screw Mindless and Battle Fury and wait till you see just how quickly you are obliterating the enemy jungle before they can even catch you as you're taking all their safe farm away from them. His shard makes it so that any target that is hit by Suguchi will have a 6 second debuff on them that, if Weaver's within 1200 range of them and uses Geminid, a Geminid attack will go onto them. 
This ability has no limit on target either. If there's a triple stack ancient camp or a 15 plus creep wave coming at you, you will hit all targets if they're affected by your mark. Before the change, targets needed to have the swarm present on them, which made we were able to play a lot safer and was better from a kill standpoint for certain, but farming wise, the shard is absolutely on fire at the moment. Do be warned though, after testing the shard rather extensively, I found that the gemmin attack generated onto targets hit by Sakuchi does not benefit from any sort of modifiers that you have, unlike the normal gemmin attack. Your actual damage will still work as normal, but you won't proc a Maelstrom, Crit, or even a Scotty from this. With these three items acquired, it really becomes up to the individual player on what to go for next, once you've upgraded your Maelstrom to either Gleipnir or Mjolnir. Scotty, Side of Ice, Black Cane Bar, Daedalus, Aghanims, depending on what your team needs, you can build accordingly. Skilling Weaver is quite straightforward, and rarely do you deviate from the norm on him, really. The most important step inherent to his lane dominance is his level 4. You want to go for Suguchi at level 1, then get Yamanetta at level 2 to really start your annoying harassing, skill Suguchi at level 3 for its lower cooldown and damage before getting the Swarm at level 4. Having all three skills at level 4 gives you such massive kill potential, it's ridiculous. Throwing Swarm towards an enemy support, gap closing him together with your position 4 before going in for the kill with your Yamanet Blightstone Swarm combo will make most early game heroes shatter. Following this, get ultimate whenever it's available at 6, 12, and 18. Get Tsukuchi as quickly as possible and then max out Gemnet for quicker farming before ending with maxing the swarm. His talents are pretty divided between what you like and need and you should adjust them according to what you feel you need in the game the most. My most common allocation would be 9 strength at level 10, 20 mana break at level 15, 90 Gemnet attack at level 20, and plus 1 Gemnet attack at 25. Worth noting here in particular aren't the first two talents at 10 or 15, but rather 20 and 25. These talents are absolutely monstrous and you'll see such a spike in power at 20 in particular. From one-shotting every creep wave with your shard combo to laying waste to cores with your tremendous damage, you're now seriously equipped with potential to mop up an entire enemy team damage-wise. Now that we've covered the various bases of Weaver, let's finally go over which way to play him as a position 3 doing your average pup game. I mentioned briefly how I play him similar to how I do Broodmother, and this is entirely true as well. Aggressively, oppressively, and like an absolute twat. Your ability to make the enemy furious with you is up there with Brood, and don't be surprised as the enemy sends in excess of 3 heroes after you to stop you from pushing, shoving, and farming their side of the map. As I said, make sure that you win your lane. This is mightily important because while your playstyle will focus a lot more on farming than your teammates would probably like, your playstyle isn't to go into your territory to farm but rather remain on the enemy's side for the majority of the game. This frees up an incredible amount of farm and space for your allies, which is where the comparison to Broodmother comes in in the first place. Where Broodmother tends to web up the entire enemy jungle and make it her base, you'll use a combination of bringing wards and sentries into enemy jungle, make sure you can see where the enemy could be coming from before you start constantly pushing and farming there. With your toolkit being as wide as it is, you can survive most team compositions just fine, but will have to play safer depending entirely on what team they have. By keeping keen awareness of where the enemy is moving at all times, you can keep the enemy's safe lane in a constant state of being pushed and usually take a tier 2 tower at the same time a broodmother is able to. Furthermore, should your team clash with the enemy next to your outpost or be ganked close to their tower, you can do a very quick rotation if you see the potential for killing the enemy or use it as an advantage to go for more buildings. Even as early as 20 minutes into the game, if you constantly pressure the enemy's lane and already have their tier 2 down, they have to be very cautious how they move, because you'll be able to swoop in and start whittling at their tier 3 stupidly fast if they aren't careful. By playing Weaver this way, you're essentially ending up with the farm of a position 1 hero and the pressure of a position 2, constantly putting the enemy on their heels while ramping up farm at such a rapid rate that you're able to flay them alive if they keep letting you do it. The greatest downside to this strategy is the fact that you're not a teamfighter like Mars, Tide, or Enigma that so many people are fond of, and you don't have a built-in stun to set up kills the same way. What you do have, however, is an insane lane pressure that way more often than not leads into dominating the lane and sending the enemy carry crying into jungle, before you take their towers and their jungle away from them, which in turn will cause a stupid amount of space for the rest of your team, as the enemy is scrambling to rotate a multitude of heroes to try and deal with you, which is incredibly hard in the first place. Executing this playstyle takes a lot of practice, since it's so very different from bombastically seeking out teamfight after teamfight. Doing it correct though is very rewarding and a powerful way to play the current pub environment. Your enemies might want to play as 5, but you'll single-handedly force them into a situation where they can't. Thanks for watching this week's video on Weaver. 
While probably seen as a bit more of an unorthodox pick on offlane, he truly shines in the current pop patch we have going on right now. On top of being a very rewarding hero with a high skill ceiling. What are your thoughts? Do you think picking only teamfight initiators on offlane is right? Or are you okay with seeing various different picks on offlane? Let me know in the comments. As always, you can catch me live from Monday to Friday at twitch.tv slash vapkubashi. Come say hello. I hope that you try out Reaver as an offlaner. He's seriously strong and his oppressive game can really lead to some strong MMR gains for you once you put the time in with him.